what's going on everyone it's andres here and it's late uh i was setting up a few things here at home but i have to weigh in on something that uh for those of you on the video platforms probably missed out on because i did instagram lives uh the day that steven crowder um opened up about uh what he considers a con inc uh, contract uh, for those of you that are unawares uh louder crowder is the biggest conservative um, show on youtube despite the fact that it's not monetized but he has a revenue stream or had a revenue stream over at the blaze via his mug club uh and then uh, rumble picked him up so he's getting a lot of attention over there but right as of right now he's off season as he's looking for a place to uh, kind of host his show and um, just hours ago, uh, Daily Wire responded because for those of us that saw uh, Stephen's uh, strongly worded um, video about uh, what he feels is that Conservative Inc. or Con Inc. or Big Con is in is in bed with big tech, the very things that individuals like myself have have so far been against. Uh, he took it as an offense when while not naming names or mentioning that uh, it was a money dispute or whatever in the contract um, there were red flags all over that and I was one of those that initially said that he's not gonna land a Daily Wire when I heard that he was in a movie show I was like, he's not gonna land a Daily Wire he's just not a fit for that place so it actually took me by surprise that uh, the contract ended up being the Daily Wire I'm like, oh well I'm surprised that they had even discussed this, despite that they've been friends for like a decade. What doesn't surprise me is that it was a Daily Wire contract, uh, because that's the kind of thing I expect from Daily Wire. So I'm going to give you my thoughts as quickly as I can uh, on this, because I've already done a live on it, and I'm, gonna, I'm replacing my, my Instagram live with this one. Um, uh, reasons are my own. But uh, for those of you that are... Uh, our followers on my program or follow me across the socials uh i chime in on politics absolutely but if i'm going to do a, a politically heavy centric show uh, i do that for off the record i don't do this uh as um on the daily um, for for my public audience because uh, i don't i don't like uh, i don't like when people bring their politics up to me so why would i do the same to you if you came over to my channel to uh find out about tech which might include politics uh, or real estate which might include politics because that's how it affects your wallet how it affects you on a daily and things like that but it's something that's considered a polit political commentary um straight up uh, that's not something that i that i enjoy doing anymore to bludgeon people over the head with their with my politics um, but it isn't at least it shouldn't be uh if you're if you're not new around here that it shouldn't be a surprise that i am a conservative and i'm a registered republican but on top of all that i am a christian uh, a practicing christian at that not not just one that just bench warms so <clears throat> with this um um I, I guess i have to quickly address uh just some of the overtones in all this um, because the same way i feel about the gop is the same way i feel about the the, the conservative sphere in that um, I don't want to say they're all rhinos, but there are those that are not really invested in the interest of supposedly uh, the American patriot that's supposed to be supporting. It's uh, Some of it is a grift, and it really came to light when uh, I took on the Freedom Phone because I knew outright it was a grift, and I called out everybody that was making money out of it, um, and only two... Uh, one company, one news outlet, and one influencer um, reached out to me and responded. Uh, Just the News was a news outlet, and Candace Owens was the other um, that responded to me about the whole thing because I came out strong against that thing, especially when people that I trusted um, were pushing this piece of crap, you know, and uh, and people fell for it, and and it's by it's evidenced by my playlist on on YouTube that you can see every single one of my Freedom Phone um, coverage and people reaching out to me asking for information. So I'm I'm. I made it on my mission that if you're going to tread on stuff that I talk about and that I cover, such as tech, I'm going to come out and address it. I don't care who it is. Uh, just like uh, I, for those of you that don't follow me on social, I've been calling out 
Patriot Mobile, not Patriot Mobile directly themselves, because at least their website is honest about it, rather of the influencers that are pushing it, because it's it, it comes across as another grift. Say, oh, make yourself uncancelable and get, um, get the Patriot, Patriot Mobile where AT&T and them can't cancel you. Patriot Mobile didn't go out and start building their own infrastructure, okay? They're borrowing from AT&T and T-Mobile. And in Patriot Mobile, for their credit, at least they put it on their, on their landing page so you know. Um, they're just at a discounted rate. So technically, AT&T can still cut you off. Uh, and then you want to look at a more dark side of things and like, oh, you signed up for Patriot Mobile. That's just a fed op. <laughs> you know, it's like you'll never hear the end of this stuff. Like, oh, you don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes. So what's going on right now um, with um, uh, someone that I wholeheartedly respect, not Steven Crowder. And uh, I, I jokingly say that it was his Vox apocalypse for why my channel stopped growing, but it's actually the truth. So, um, but I, I, I tease him, uh, I tease him in jest because I'm like, whatever, man, it's what it is what it is and um, I, whatever. The Daily Wire has been one where um, I respect certain hosts more than I respect others. But I also am well aware that hey, it's a business. And as someone that's in the business world, I'm a business owner and operator um, and also a content creator on YouTube. I, I understand both sides of this. Unfortunately, what just what, what if you watch Steven's video and you watch Jeremy Boring of Daily Wire's response, to uh to steven and all this in a 52 minute response and steven's was about half an hour and, he, and honestly part of it was only about 20 minutes but the accusations that that this the one that's responsible for this contract among others uh is uh, is part of big con or big tech or is in bed with them and and uh, silencing uh, conservative voices or at least putting them on the leash um well it's unfortunate that it's it's becoming a public spat, and I really hope that they're able to settle their differences. But it really speaks to why I didn't um, I didn't get sponsorships from from these other places and partner up with other places because they were also doing the same. I wanted to grow my channel, but I wanted to keep my voice, and I did the same thing when it comes to uh, to to real estate because. If anyone has seen it, uh, I, I announced last year that I was no longer a realtor, right? so a member of the um, Association of Realtors, in this case, the National Association of Realtors, because they were they were trying to control my speech. And I said, I forget it. I know it's going to cost me a lot, um, especially when I lose access to all these tools. But I'm like, I'm not going to let you control my speech when it has nothing to do with my profession as a professional real estate uh, broker. Um, so I, I understand all, all of that, every aspect of things, and uh, I, I didn't want to pick sides on on any of this. Uh, of course, when Stephen came out and said, it, I was like, "Oh well, <laughs> you're at least you're acknowledging that this is a problem that exists in our uh, in in the conservative space, such as CPAC and TPUSA. Some even might lump in uh, PragerU and by extension the Daily Wire. Look, I understand that some people have issues that uh, say Daily Wire hosts have, uh, they won't go their subjects um, because if they do, they'll get demonetized or, or they'll get a strike on something and they'll lose revenue and ad revenue or their, their ad uh, people will be boycotted. I mean, look at the response that Daily Wire ended up doing. We got Jeremy's Razors now as an option because Harry's Razors dropped being a sponsor. And there was a similar issue that happened in uh, the Blaze TV as a whole, and that's where Steven Crowder has Mud Club. Um, anyone familiar with Elijah Schaefer with his show uh, Slightly Offensive, he used to be on a, uh, on a, on a show co-hosting with Sidney Watson called um, You Are Here. And on, on that one, um, it's uh, Elijah Schaefer was promoting um, Black Rifle Coffee on a post with... Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse um, being paid his bond uh, or his bail bond uh, to get out back in August 2000 uh, after August 2020 and he was wearing a Black Rifle coffee shirt and Elijah Schaefer tweeted about it and then also announced the Black Rifle thing and then it started a firestorm because uh, it, it, it appeared of uh, guilt by association that Black Rifle coffee was supporting something that was taken out of a uh, uh, out of context or whatever and there was a huge firestorm big infighting and as a result black rifle coffee lost a lot of um uh, a lot of its supporters 
And not just that, um, you just saw those deals just basically disappear off most of the Blaze TV. I mean, the Hosh Twins do their own things, but so they still promote it. Uh, JP, um, Awaken JP, for anybody that uh, knows about these names, uh, promote um, Black Rifle Coffee. And uh, and yours truly still drinks it. So you got issues with that. But that's the that's the virtue of knowing someone or having a connection with someone within the company. And um, But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But the point is that, that that stuff happens, okay? And uh, the way I feel about all this, because everybody's going to have an opinion about this if, if they really are connected to it. Uh, I am connected to, to all this because I have a vested interest in all this on where I ultimately wanted to partner with my show. And um, I actually stayed away from the Daily Wire because I felt that I would have to um, circumvent certain conversations unless they didn't mind it where I would bring it behind the paywall because uh, they offer paywalls. And I already do that in a form of off the record, which I host on Locals. But it's, it's, it, just ne it just never got to that. And basically, they all left Los Angeles. So I'm like, well, well um, I'm not going to fly out of Tennessee <laughs> uh, Nashville for any of this. So in seeing that, uh, when uh, Steven announced that he was leaving um, the Blaze because his contract was like, wasn't going to renew, um, I had an idea of, I was reading between the lines when he was kind of alluding to that he hasn't been happy for a time, that uh, uh, he, he's uncertain of the future, they were losing sleep, because this is a livelihood, and and there was uh, that, 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 that concern right there. That he wasn't going to be able to take his subscribers, the ones like yours truly that use Muck Club. Uh, to to sign up for his uh, uh, full show that he can't do on YouTube because YouTube. <clears throat> and when uh, when I was reading between the lines, uh, I knew I'm like, well, you're not gonna end up at Daily Wire. I mean, this, you're not a fit for that. That's not gonna happen. So I was actually incredibly surprised that this happened. Uh, and Jeremy Boring uh, in his video announced that they approached Stevens' agent uh, and they made um, a, uh, an offer of. Fifty million dollars or whatever, and um, Jeremy Boring go on to say that uh, Stephen wanted more. Now Stephen didn't mention anything about money on his video, but uh, it's I, it will stand to reason that perhaps um, he did, and he deserves it. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock him for that, but it's also unrealistic uh, because of just how big of a target he has on his back, and it, to for for all this I mean, they do them, and they're supposed to be friends, and now this bat is out of public. I, I don't like it one bit. The infighting is very similar to how the Republicans' are establishment is setting up to anoint Ron DeSantis um, to, to put him up against Trump. And, and if anybody knows anything, Trump is just going to drag Ron DeSantis through the mud. And Ron DeSantis, for all intents and purposes, could be uh, could very well be an excellent uh, um, Republican candidate in, in the future, but that's not what the establishment wants. So now there's a lot of infighting with that and um, with the leadership trying to force out America first uh, patriots, uh, the uh, candidates and all that, and, and, and the, the mudslinging and, and then what happened with the uh, uh, Speaker of the House vote and all that. You see how ugly these things can be. And there's a lot of infighting and th that's that spills over to the conservative sphere in, in how it feels that we're fighting uphill against these powers that be where basically the town square is where all of you are and i'm not only on youtube i'm across multiple different platforms because i don't want to rely on youtube i got an email and i didn't talk about this and i'm like where is this coming from because i haven't been i didn't i haven't gotten a strike on my channel um i haven't been um, videos that uh, I know are not going to be monetized. I don't even bother asking to be monetized. Those are the ones that get limited monetization because maybe someone used the wrong word or whatever. And some of them are outright demonetized. I'm like, whatever. I I get it. But I got an email from, from Google saying that they were canceling my, um, my ad account. So it's like, well, this came out of nowhere. Uh, so it's like, no explanation, nothing there. Just like when Linktree just deleted my account without an explanation. They say, you're, you're suspended from using Linktree. What did I do besides put my links to my show? <laughs> and so I don't know. And I and I covered that because I saw it was a mass purge of conservative accounts that Linktree did. So I said, okay, fine, I'll make my own Linktree. And 
these these things do happen and uh, uh daily wire is is doing their own uh, i guess you could say version of a uh of a parallel economy uh, but in response to the culture war where i believe conservatives have failed um i mean even look at vid angel as a conservative uh as a, conservative, as a christian um who has com is completely at odds with with mormons um i give credit to where credit's due where um, what they've done to to make vid angel not just like a, a way to sanitize if you will uh more mature content so you can make it family friendly they went on to do vid angel studios and start producing their own content uh, and then daily wire announcing their endeavors to make movies and, and and have a kids genre thing basically an answer to their own netflix uh, i like that idea uh, and it costs a lot of money i know they're working with heavy debt to do a lot of this and uh i know some people on the inside that have not actually been um happy with some of the terms that um were being asked of them that's when like we know i'm not going to do business with you i'm going to take my um my stuff elsewhere so i am aware of those i had those conversations with these individuals behind the scenes so um that's why i'm like if i'm gonna grow my show uh i also have to look at realistically that that uh, i'm not going to grow in that respect that's why i have affiliates i don't have sponsors um because i'm not beholden to them they're not forcing me to do an ad read or whatever i just promote them whenever i want especially across social media uh mostly there i don't really do it on my show unless you probably see it in the background on my on my studio but with all that being said um i i uh, maybe they, they thought it was a, a nice thing to do on the daily wires part to reach out to steven's agent i don't think it was prudent because i'm not surprised by the results because you also got to look at steven's side and this is where I, where I feel for him is that this is his baby this is what he grew this is what's been targeted and he had to um navigate those waters on how to generate a uh, revenue uh stream from something while also maintaining his voice and basically limiting ads um so so I know that Bill Barr and um, um, this uh, uh, Good Ranchers and and, and and Walter, just like maybe I could name five. Just one more is like a nasal thing. Um, and then there was one more, I forget. So at most I could name like five sponsors that, that he's had in maybe two years. He doesn't really do all that. So he depended on the audience to really do it. But it's unknown what that number was because Blaze TV wouldn't release it and i knew that wasn't going to be a concern because how would how would steven be in touch with his audience members after he leaves if he can't communicate to them if the contact information is kept by blaze tv and from a contract perspective yes that makes sense for for blaze as much as you might not like it but if you had your lawyer read it you should have known then okay so for basically the offer from daily wire looking like we'll take your baby and we're keeping this baby until you know terms up and we'll give baby back to you it's like, uh, no you're not <laughs> uh and uh some of those things were addressed but i think here is the here's the bottom line of um of all which is why some on the right view um uh, daily wire and their ilk as uh sellouts because like they won't go there, they won't say this, they won't say that. They make a lot of money, they spend a lot of advertising on big tech, and they they, they have clout, they have audience, and all that. But then you do have, and I think I, I agree with this perspective from Elijah Schaefer, where the ones that complain the most are not the ones that have the most to lose. So if you don't like it that way, then you, no one's telling you to go support them. But man, why the heck do you got to make it your living to like just be just antagonize and hate someone else because they won't do what you want them to do you know it's you didn't make the deal but it's like no it's because you gotta say this it's like okay say it lose everything then what um how, how does that make you feel are you gonna go uh pay the the revenue that they lost because they said what well, they had to champion my perspective out there you know like, well why don't you go do it why don't you well, i don't have the audience well how do you think they get an audience it requires promotion but here's the knock that i have on daily wire if you do have that uh, if you want to be part of the culture where you want to have um those fights against uh, uh big tech you're not going to put all your eggs in one freaking basket when they all basically share the same terms of service slight different change because uh elon now has twitter but why why are you not on the other platforms where supposedly your clientele is 
Yes, you want to win the hearts and minds of those that don't agree with you, but the paying customer aren't them. It's the one that support your perspective. So why aren't you on Parler, at least more active, for example, and buy ads there to start drawing people in and you're supporting a company that uh, backs you up. I mean, they're in Nashville too, and if I'm not mistaken, they're probably a few doors down, if not in the same freaking building. Or how about being on Gab? Oh, no, we can't talk about Gab. Well, why not? Because you let mainstream media dictate what Gab is. Unsavory people are everywhere. It's a human condition, not a platform issue. And if you want, why not reach the masses? Why not go about it? Hey, I'm not afraid of what you have to say. Let's have a conversation. That's the whole point. If you don't mind taking it to leftists, but God forbid you take it to, to the right. I mean, I, I find that completely uh, dishonest in a way. It's like you, you put all your eggs in one place because you know that's where you will make money. Make money. But if your supposed clientele is in all these other places because they've been expelled from big tech, the same place that you say you're fighting against, which you're in kind of in league, that's 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 the point that Stephen's making. Why not be in these other places? Because it'll look bad, because it'll affect your ad revenue, because it'll you'll be boycotted then you are putting all your eggs in one basket. So, yeah, it, it, I feel it was wrong. Uh, well, it was misguided to make that offer. And, of course, that's me making a perspective on, on something that's only, we only have little uh, teeny bits and pieces of information of it. And uh, I'm hoping this doesn't get uglier because, like I said, I hate the infighting. And I think Elijah Schaefer was making a, a great perspective on all this because Elijah Schaefer was on the blaze. Um, he's in, he's independent now. And he acknowledges just to, uh, it's, it's an uphill battle and everything when you're independent and have next to no sponsors. And um, less engagement because there's no big promotional push for you to get in front of all the eyeballs. But Elijah is also across platforms. He's on Gab. He's on Twitter. Uh, I think he's on Facebook. I know he's on YouTube. He's also on Rumble. So yeah, at least he's making that concerted effort. Um, but, you know, it's it's like some, some people are like, oh, well, I'm comfortable here. And I'm not going to judge you for making that decision especially if it's your bread and butter. So, yeah, I I, I don't know I don't know how it's all going to wind up. Like I'm saying, I'm I'm really hoping that that this is a uh, is settled amicably. Um but the cat's out of the bag unfortunately, and it might get worse before it gets better if it gets better at all. I hope it does. But I don't know. There's people throwing fuel on the fire, and even some of uh, Stephen Crowder's former employees are like, "I plead the fifth. I got nothing to do with this." <laughs> and even some over at the Geeks and Gamer Sphere and Nerd Rotics are kind of having fun with this. Um, Jeremy uh, from Geeks and Gamers was like, "Millionaires fighting millionaires," you know. It's like, uh, well, I don't, I don't think I agree with that take, but based on the information, I, I can't blame him for making that uh, that. Uh, um, claim uh, at least neurotic admitted that he controls everyone's soul except odin <laughs> uh, Gary. uh well, anyway well we'll see where this stuff goes i had to chime in because i feel like i need to share with this with the the, the lots of you if anyone even tuned into all this uh, and it's really late but i i feel like i wouldn't be able to sleep unless i got this out there and it's also giving you a perspective as to um, what I've been trying to do in, in growing my channel, not just being on YouTube, but also on other platforms, because um, odds are you're watching this on YouTube, but this is across uh, multiple different platforms. Um, and so it's so my podcast. I self-host my podcast, but I also use a, another host to to push it. But in case that feed is ever taken down, I have my backup feed. That's the same thing I do with all this other stuff. So if one day my channel disappears from YouTube, or if I disappear from Instagram, I have, I'm active on other places that literally pick up the slack. And I'm engaged in uh, the ones that I have the most engagement in, such as Vero True Social. Um, and I don't mean Truth Social. I mean Vero True Social. That's what literally the tagline um and gab i am on parlor i i don't know i have like this this loyalty to them for something loyalty to them i don't know why maybe because they were maybe because i missed the engagement uh and i feel that they were wronged um uh, for what happened 
and you know I'm I've been helping with the beta team to get their their, their Android apps and the I, iOS apps uh, and I, I'm even testing the beta websites and reporting stuff to the to the team so we can um, you know iron it out for a much better experience um, but uh, um, yeah, so I'm I'm across uh, that, and now I'm I'm active as of this month on Twitter, and in just in one week, just to, to have that much engagement has been uh, pretty amazing. So it's setting the bar for what expectations are. Uh, but yeah, I'm across all this stuff simply for the fact that I what Stephen brought up, and mostly what I've always felt like I want to control my voice. I don't want to be beholden to one place if there's one revenue stream. And hey, there's an opportunity to reach other voices, and I know that I have. So um, yeah, uh, I, I hope they can bury the hatchet. We'll see where this lands. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you all. I just felt like I should. That's why it's not one of these flashy videos. Or I'm, I'm at the I'm at the studio where it looks cleaner. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, either way, stay tuned. I have stuff in the pipeline. Um, I'm gonna be doing some tech unboxings. I've been, I haven't been able to get to them, so they've been sitting in boxes for like a month and a half. I'm like I'm gonna open it, uh, but I need to open it in front of the camera. Uh, and I'm also thinking about doing. If any of you are are fans of the show X fans, um, if you heard this far, then you could chime in down below. I'm gonna do this on social media later. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a, a series of videos as I, as I go along in comparing the book to the show because I'm almost done with the second book. I have all the books on hardcover and paperback, and uh, I'm it's just been a breeze. I love this book. I love the show. I love the story, and I just felt like there there are differences. Some things that the show did better, and the book did, and the book of course does better. Um, and I wanted to compare them, so if anybody's interested, uh, let me know because I'm thinking about doing it not just from my locals, but also bringing it to to YouTube. But anyway, I don't. Want, I made this video way longer than I thought I would, but uh, I basically summarized two live streams in one that I did on on Instagram. So it it is shorter than what those are. So if you didn't tune in on Instagram, then you got basically the entire story summary here, uh, especially with the updates from the Daily Wire. Anyway, that's where I'll leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I guess uh, I'll see you in the next one on the main.